Hello, this is High Journey. In mid-July, about two weeks from now, I will be returning to Baltimore for a hybrid tibial surgery. This includes external tibial torsion correction on my right tibia and to lengthen my tibias with the precise nails. This is my last video I will publish until my surgery in mid-July. A question some people ask me is, why include tibial lengthening with torsion correction? Wasn't my femur lengthening sufficient enough to gain enough height? This is why I'm pursuing more height with tibial lengthening. My height dysphoria was reduced 90% after femur lengthening. I got my height almost 5'9 and a half or the 45th percentile of adult males in the US. While it would be satisfactory to be 5'9 plus, it would be great to be 5'10 plus which is the 50th percentile, 5'10". It would be great to reduce my height dysphoria 100% after tibial lengthening. I will be 5'11 and over the 55th percentile. My goal for tibial lengthening is 3.5 centimeters. Once again, I'll post the reasons why I'm not going for all 5 centimeters. You can pause this and read it for yourself. Here are some of the differences I've learned so far between tibia versus femur lengthening. First, with tibial lengthening, I start lengthening seven days after surgery. Femurs is five days. Lengthening rate is a little slower, 0.75 millimeter per day versus femurs, one millimeter per day. Physical therapy is a little easier for the tibias, even though it's still mandatory. With tibias, it's a, at least 75% stretching the calves and the Achilles tendon. With the femurs, you stretch so many large muscles around the femurs and hips. PT sessions per week, tibias typically three, even in the advanced state. But with femurs, it's typically three to five sessions per week, starting with three and then as you lengthen more, especially around five centimeters or so, it can easily get to five sessions per week, sometimes even more. The pain level, they say that tibia lengthening is less painful but with the femurs, there's muscle tightness, which causes a lot of pain and challenges. And finally, the biggest challenge is with tibia lengthening, it's fighting ballerina foot or equinus contracture, where your foot drops because of tight calves as you lengthen. And also more time is required to lengthen and consolidate than femurs. With femur lengthening, Muscle tightness around so many large muscles around the femurs and hips are a big challenge and also loss of flexibility. Another adjustment I'm making for tibial lengthening is full-time use of wheelchair during lengthening. Before I was using the walker for femur lengthening, at least inside my room to get to the bathroom because I was using the large 70 pound limit precise 2.2 nails. But for tibial lengthening, I will be using the medium 50 pound limit precise 2.2 nails. So I plan to use the wheelchair full time while lengthening, not the walker. The wheelchair will be used inside my room to use the bathroom. I've already practiced transferring from wheelchair to toilet seat or shower chair and vice versa. I just need to take off the leg rest for indoors. And then I will start using the walker partially a few weeks into consolidation. Here's a sample of a video on how to transfer from wheelchair to toilet seat or shower chair. I'll eventually make my own videos soon. Do as, do as best you can in this situation. And then I put a hand onto the toilet there. The other hand holds on the front of the frame. And as with all transfers, just lean your weight over your feet, keep your head down, and most of your weight then goes through your legs, so it gives your hands an easy time. And then it's just a case of transfer up, and I kind of turn around as I sit onto the toilet. And flick the brakes off the chair. I forgot to mention, obviously, brakes are on the chair, so it goes without saying, really, for transfers. And I'm on the loop. Bring the chair up, lock the brakes in. Um, at this point, I'm not really too fussed about the cast as being forward because there's enough stability for me to do what I need to do and transfer back on. Again, I put both my feet out in front of me and I try and turn them a little bit towards the direction I want to go. A little bit of a gap between them. And I get my hand in the back of the toilet seat. So my hand is on the toilet seat there, right by my bum, so by my pocket. And then I just lean forward, up and round, and I'm back on the seat. 
Losing weight is beneficial for a leg lifting patient, even for a full weight bearing device. It is also easier to get around since you rely on your arms a lot. I was 170 pounds up to mid-May. After dieting, I am currently down to 162 pounds. My goal is to get to 160 pounds before surgery. I'll likely drop to 155 pounds after surgery and during lengthening. You can see my first tibia preparation video for more details with my tibia lengthening. The link to the video is in the description of this video. What to expect? My surgery date is in mid-July. I'm not going to state the exact date publicly. You can read my height journey blog to keep updated during the lengthening phase. It will be very difficult to make videos while lengthening, so the blog will be my primary communication outlet during the lengthening and early consolidation phases. I'll try to publish some videos on my YouTube channel during lengthening, but it will be rare and infrequent. I'll announce it on my blog if I do publish any videos. Victor Cyborg for Life will try to visit me while I'm in Baltimore and might make a video. While I'm in Baltimore, I plan to do a live interview with Victor as one of the few tibia precise patients out there. When I can resume my YouTube channel on a regular basis, I will provide you excellent insights and information on tibia lengthening. The YouTube channel will be even bigger and better than before. There is a lot ahead with a height journey YouTube channel and blog. There is also a new Discord server on limb lengthening you can join. See the description of this video.